Hi, welcome to Hey Parents, Let's Chat. I am Jess Hunt, and I wanted to have a conversation today about the importance of playtime for children. Um, and I am going to dedicate this video to children of all ages, like from one year of age up until, you know, 12, 13, um, any age that your child is at, the importance of playtime is crucial, not only to their learning and development, um, but to help them like through social situations. Um, and if you're starting with a one-year-old and just having play dates, you know, invite some mom friends over, invite their kids over, moms can chit chat while they're monitoring the kids play. Um, or, you know, whether you're school age kids and you've had, you know, two or three friends come over or even just one friend and your kids are playing, um, you know, supervising them. And I, I want to, this is why I'm saying the different ages and like inviting the kids over. And I say the word supervision, um, which is different than, um, you know, actually jumping in and helping them through every single social situation. We do not want to be helicopter parents. Um, but I do believe that it's important for um, parents to be monitoring the socialization because when you're monitoring how children socialize, you are learning a lot about your own child. Um, as much as you are learning about the kids that they hang out with, the kind of friends that they are sort of magnetized to. Um, are they a submissive socializer? Are they the more of an aggressive socializer? Are they the bossy um, you know, child? Are they the one that is manipulating to get what they want? Um, and these could be phases that children are going through, not necessarily characteristics. Um, but if you do notice that your child is going through a phase that you're not particularly fond of, um, you know, if your child is going through the bossy phase. Um, and I do believe that um, kids can be bossy in an actually a really good way because they're showing leadership skills. They're practicing how to lead. Um, but we do want children to be doing it in such a way where they are leading with kindness um, and not always barking orders and telling people what to do. Um, there is a difference. And so when I say monitor and supervise through any age, as a parent, we do wanna be keeping an eye on our kids for certain phases they might be going through. Um, as we learn about them, um, but I am going to preface that um, depending on the age of your child, you need to decide when to step in and when not to. Um, when your child is like one to two, three or four, um, even four, that's getting a little bit old. When your children are ages one, two and three, then you wanna step in, model certain behaviors because they are learning. Once they hit you know, four, five and six, you don't want to step in as much because you want them to be learning through natural consequences. Oh, so-and-so doesn't want to play with me if I act like this. That's an important lesson for kids to learn. Um, and even as they get older, they're going to make social mistakes. Those mistakes are learning moments for them. We don't want to prevent those learning moments from happening because that is literally something that's going to stick inside their brain and going to be easier for them to learn from. Um, if we're preventing these moments from happening, then their learning is not happening. So this is why I preface this, like all of this, the importance of playing. Um, and again, through any ages, whether they're age one or whether they're 12, um, get kids together, um, invite kids over to your house, um, text a group of mom friends and be like, hey, let's meet at the playground. Hey, let's go meet at the ball field. Um, and that way, maybe you and your mom friends can sit with some lawn chairs um, and have some girl chat while the kids are out playing. Or if you're by yourself, text some moms and say, hey, listen, I'm going to scoot around and pick up, you know, um, five or six kids for a pickup game of basketball at the playground. So be ready in 20 minutes and I'll swing by and pick up your kid. And that way you are the one who is monitoring while all of the kids go play. You can be reading a book, you can be getting some work done, um, you know, whatever is helpful for you. You're off to the side, not even involved, the kids are off playing. Um, the reason why 
getting together and playing is so, so, so important is because kids have to learn how to deal with each other. Kids have to learn how to run around. They have to learn how to set rules for games and um, play with imaginary play. Um, they have to learn how to physically do certain things, monkey bars, somersaults, um, you know, cartwheels, all of these things. Um, so super important, whether it's boys or girls. It could be, you know, let's go practice gymnastics for the girls or, you know, let's go do kickball for the boys. Or frankly, it could be like a co-ed group. Who cares? It could be the boys doing gymnastics if they're, um, you know, wanting to practice certain skills or whatever. I'm just completely making this up right now. Um, but the importance of this message is that kids are getting out and they're playing with each other. Um, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing more frustrating than um, being on the playground and seeing kids who are, you know, five or six, seven or eight, nine or ten, who are just socially insecure because they've just not been exposed, um, or who are just awkward on the playground because they literally haven't had the practice. Um, and you can tell, I mean, I, as a teacher and as a mom, I have seen thousands of kids, whether it's, you know, at the fast food playground or the school playground or, you know, walking through the mall and seeing kids try to socialize with other kids, um, at the food court or, um, you know, at soccer games when their siblings are on the soccer field and they're trying to play with friends, um, out in the play space behind them, um, it, you, I, you just see it. There are a lot of kids out there who are just socially insecure and they're socially awkward. And it's not because they're not capable, it's because they haven't been exposed. So rather than have your kids be at home by themselves, isolated on video games or playing within, you know, just the constrictions of your own home, get them out. And that means you as a parent, you have to get out as well. Um, and so, you know, go take them to the playground or, you know, go take them to a ball field. Get them outside. Invite kids over to your house where they can go play in the woods behind your house and play, you know, hide and seek in the woods, um, letting them know what their boundaries are so that it's a safe environment. Um, do things to have your kids bond with other kids, practice those socializing skills. Um, and that way they will know how to handle uncomfortable situations when they come upon them at school at recess, um, or no matter what grade they're at, if they have practice with playtime, again, starting at age one, even with babies, babies can crawl around together. They're learning all the time. They're literally little sponges. So starting from very, very early, exposing them to socialization, um, practicing those skills and allowing them to make mistakes. Again, we don't want to be helicopter moms at all. Um, and again, at ages one, two, and three, we can step in um, and we can model good behavior um, because they're all going to go through phases where they're throwing things and hitting each other and we have to model and share with them proper behavior so they can learn. But once they hit like, you know, four five and six and older, <sighs> keep an eye on them so that you know what's going on, but do not interfere. Do you want them, um, to be able to handle social, social situations on their own? If you as the mom are stepping in, you are more likely to embarrass them. Um, don't do that. Allow them to save face and handle social situations on their own. And then after the playtime is over, you might have a conversation with them be like, hey, how'd you feel when this happened? Or what did you think when so-and-so said this to you? Um, how might you handle that differently in the future? What words can you say next time somebody says this to you? Um, because in any of those social, social situations, they might be at a loss for words in the moment, but if we're practicing with them phrases to use for next time, then they're equipped with, um, proper phrases and words to use, um, to defend themselves or to stick up for themselves, um, or, 
you know, how to handle things a little bit nicely next time, because perhaps it's your kid that was being unkind with their words. Um, and how might you fix that in the future? So again, not in front of the kids, but with some private time later on, those are really good conversations to have. So again, we really have to be getting our kids out and playing. So, so, so important. Um, if you want your child to grow up um, and be a confident child in public while socializing with other kids, running around the playground, um, and then that will help you to avoid them being awkward and insecure in social situations. Um, so get your kids out there, find creative ways to do it, um, and go have fun doing it. And I hope that um, this video has been helpful for you. If you found value in it, go ahead and hit subscribe, like, follow, share, all of those good things. Um, and if you have any comments that could help other moms along their parenting journeys, add your comments to any of these videos in the comment sections below. You can go to heyparentsletschat.com to add your comments um, because I really do believe that we are the experts and parents can learn from each other. So I hope that this has been helpful and um, I thank you for joining us.